Hey people, it's Kieran from The Run Testers here and today we're going to be looking at these. These are the Adidas SL20. New training shoe from Adidas. That SL stands for Super Light. They're the first shoe to feature a new midsole foam called Light Strike. They come in at £100, which is a pretty good price tag. Nick, Tom and I have been putting in some miles in these to find out if that's going to be the best £100 you'll ever spend or these guys should stay well put on the shelf. Let's go and find out. So let's have a quick whip around the shoe and look at what's new, what you need to know, what are the key standouts from the SL20. So the headline initially is obviously this Light Strike midsole foam. Now Light Strike is a TPU based material, it's the same as the Adidas Boost. Um, it's supposed to be firmer and lighter and that's what Adidas calls cushioning without compromise. So you get lightness but firmness, cushioning, all of those things that you know good midsole foams are supposed to do. Um, in that kind of magic kind of circle of, of connecting the properties. So one of the major things that you get with that light strike foam that's light, the net clue is there right in the name, is that you, this is an amazingly light shoe. At 230 grams, it's up there with the Nike Zoom Fly 3. It's lighter than that. It's actually the same as the Peg Turbo 2 in terms of weight. And it's not as light though as a Hoka Rincon, which is a little bit lighter. You also have underneath, there's a torsion bar in here. You've got some, some continental rubber on the outsole, just on the forefoot. So you've got a breathable mesh upper, but this upper actually, it's more, it's more close and dense than some other mesh uppers. It doesn't flex like you might find with a Nike Flyknit. Um, and that actually sort of brings a bit of, um, I guess a bit of added extra security to the shoe and a bit more of a sort of snug lockdown fit. In terms of the tongues, there's very, very little padding in the tongue. And when I say very little, I mean none. This is a really, really thin tongue. Um, around the, uh, the, the, the heel collar, there is some padding here on the left and on the right, and actually a little bit into the, into the back of the heel collar here, but not a huge amount. These actually are quite thin compared to some other training shoes that you might find. Now, the other thing I found on this, actually, it's a weird one to say, but the laces are, are very long. <laughs> and uh, it's, you have to double knot them quite a lot. And they're quite stiff actually to use. So they're, they're, I found actually the laces were quite hard to get into position. So there's a 10 mil drop, and that is exactly what you'll find in the Adi Zero Boston 8, and actually the RC 2.0. Um, actually a lot of Adidas shoes in this sort of vein run at that sort of 10 mil or very close, like a 9.5 mil drop. And there's a lot of familiarity here because of that between this shoe and those we've just mentioned. So another little detail I think to pay attention to is here at the back of the hill, you can see that there's quite a considerable kind of lopsided, it's almost like a wedge has been taking, taken out of the outside of the, um, of the heel here. And I mean, I'm presuming that's there to help uh, support one way or the other with the roll, but that's actually very, very noticeable. And it sort of, it sort of slants upwards and back as well as across. There is no carbon plate and although the, the foam is firm but you know you can see this this will bend unlike a lot of the other shoes that have got the carbon plates and there's a there's a there's a decent amount of spring in that um, which we'll talk about on the run later how that impacts the run. So for me the fit was a little bit narrow it's Classic Adidas of any kind of performance shoes, they're always quite narrow. I don't think it's as narrow as the Adios and the Boston, but yeah, it's still uh, it's still reasonably narrow. Uh, it fit true to size for me, and you know it's quite easy to get a good lockdown fit, which you want in a speed shoe, but if you have wide feet, just be a little bit aware that it's quite a narrow shoe. <laughs> the fit for me, um, it's, it feels fine. Um, I, I've got fairly average sized feet. I never really tend to have issues with kind of tightness of shoes or, or, or thinness. Having said that, I did. I could tell that these are a thin shoe when I ran in them. I, I had no issues, but um, I, I could definitely feel the kind of thin box there um, and the toes at the front of the, it's quite common with Adidas shoes, quite thin at the top there. So um, if you have got a wider foot, you're probably gonna notice that. So for me on fit, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I am the fat footed one from the run testers. I've got big, broad, wide, kind of high feet that tend to need a, a sort of shoe that's a little bit wider. 
I've always had it with Addy shoes. They, they tend to come up narrow on me, but with the SL20s, I found that to be quite a particular kind of problem, particularly here across the top of the foot over the lacing sort of sat down quite tight. Um, there's, there's actually a reasonable amount of room I found in the toe box. So my toes will come up on true to size eight and a half in the UK, which is what I usually run in, would come up short. I would definitely be recommending if you've got broad feet or wide feet to half a size up at least. In terms of fit as well, I also found that though there's, there's, there's a decent amount of padding around here, which is, is there for sort of comfort, when you get into this heel bit here, I found that to be a little bit narrow and it kind of, it, it holds a little bit tight around the base of the Achilles. And I actually found on a longer 20 mile run that this top bit, the high back, started to dig in at the bottom of my Achilles and I came away with some blistering, which I, I'd never normally have. Now, sometimes if you wear a shoe over and over and over, eventually the skin toughens up and that's fine. But it, over that 20 mile run, it, it cut me um, and had some soreness. That said, I do find this kind of heel sort of counter here, this this firm heel counter made for quite a kind of tight sort of snug um, fit with your foot being held in place. Um, there was little movement around the rest of the shoe, as I say, it's quite a tight fit. Um, not not un Apart from that little bit of rubbing, not uncomfortable. In the early miles, I found these, these sort of fine, but I would definitely be moving up half a size. So two words that come to mind after doing quite a few different runs in this are kind of firm and fast. Uh, this is a fast shoe. The light stroke midsole is kind of firm, it's responsive. It's a little bit firmer than Boost uh, to, for, to me um, and probably a little bit less bouncy, but it you know really gets you from heel to toe pretty quickly. Toe off's not hugely explosive like you get from a carbon shoe, carbon shoe, but it, it's pretty good. Use it for a couple of different sessions, time doing one mile reps on a kind of cinder track and on the road, and then a, a kind of a normal track session where on a proper track where I did 20 laps, kind of alternating 90 second, 80 second pace. Both times I was left really impressed with uh, how the shoe felt. Um, legs weren't absolutely wrecked at the end of that, you know, at all. They're obviously not very long sessions, but um, the cushioning was enough that, you know, I still felt quite springy. I was able to run again well the next day. Um, I would say on easy runs, I didn't it, that it was a bit firm for my taste. I prefer a kind of bouncy shoe. I think with something like the Boston, you've probably got a more um, versatile option in terms of it being able to run longer in more comfort. But you can't argue with how this does in, a, in fast runs. And I think if you're not someone who's regularly logging kind of marathons and marathon training runs, this will probably cover all the bases. So the SL20, I really, really like it. It's light, it's snappy. Um, it feels great on shorter runs. I've used it for park run, um, I've used it for a 10k race, and I've done an 18k run in it. For the park run, it was great, it was really nice, uh, it felt quick, didn't really notice any issues with it whilst I was running with it. For the 10k, it was great. For the longer run, actually I found it a little bit too stiff. It wasn't it wasn't particularly comfortable, and as I came into the, the later kilometers of that run, I really did start to feel that there wasn't a lot of cushioning, there wasn't a lot of, um, of bounce in the, in the, in the outsole and the midsole. So, um, great for shorter runs, really lightweight. I'd probably do anything from track sessions to 10K races in this. Easy long runs or easy short runs, I probably wouldn't use this. It's just, it just doesn't have the comfort. It's, it wouldn't be enjoyable to run in if you were doing it at a slow pace and you wanted to rack up some mileage. But overall, just a really nice, fast, light trainer that, yeah, just, just feels great as soon as you start wearing it. So I'm kind of with Tom and Nick on this in as much as I really think these shoes perform best when you are looking at faster pace runs and probably shorter, faster pace runs. Though I do think that you could use these to run a snappy marathon if you were moving at a clip. I actually really, when I first put them on, it, it's been a while since I've been in a, in a pair of the Adios Boost, the Adi Zero Adios Boost. And actually it, it was so reminiscent of that. And those are the shoes that I used to really love racing a marathon in before we had the super foam carbon plated, you know, Nike Next Percent. And there was a familiarity there that I really enjoyed with this shoe. And actually over, over shorter runs where I'm looking to go up a clip, 10Ks, 5Ks, I actually would be tempted to take these onto the track myself um, as a, I think they can, they can cope well with that kind of faster interval runs. They run really firm, um, that light strike foam is, is really firm and you know they're not as propulsive as, as some of the others but you know you've, you've got something which 
definitely lends itself to, to faster running. On the 20 miler that I ran where I, I was actually doing a mixture, I did some sort of easy miles and then I had some sections in that that were upping the pace to kind of threshold, so moving faster and easy runs the other side. It coped well early on with the easy miles, okay. It really sort of came into its own when I upped the pace and did the threshold bits. And then when I got the other side, you know, in, in sort of 15 to 16, 17, 18 miles and tried to go back too easy, that firmness was too much and it, it didn't feel comfortable. It wasn't really an enjoyable shoe to run in. And for that reason, I think this kind of would sit as a, as a really, really nice shoe to use when you're looking to go short and fast or shorter and fast. Or if you're going to run a marathon and you want to race it, it could, it could do the job. If you're going to do an 18 mile long, slow, easy run, then I think you're going to want to pick up a different shoe. Overall though, I, I, I was impressed. I really like the run in this. It's a, it's a nice shoe to, to run in at a fast clip. And actually, I think Addy, it's, it's not remarkable, but it's a good solid shoe for that purpose. Should you buy something else? Um, this is really good value. I mean, 100 quid, you know, already being reduced to 80 quid, a place we've seen. That's a very, very competitive price point for what is a very good shoe for um, fast running. Um, the Adios and the Boston are often around that price. And I think if you're gonna run a marathon, I'd look at one of those shoes, probably the Boston in particular. The Adios is also quite firm. Um, I just think this is a little bit too firm, I think, to do the full uh, kind of 42.2K in. But um, if you're not looking to do a marathon, I, don't, I struggle to think of anything around that price point that's as good. Like uh, the Hocker Rincon is 105 quid. It's a slightly different feel. It's a lower drop shoe. The cushioning on that, I think, will wear down much more quickly. I think the ride is reasonably similar. Maybe the Hocker's a bit more, a bit more cushioned for kind of your easy efforts. But I think this is really good value. Uh, it's got concentric rubber on the outsole. Provides good grip. Will also provide pretty good durability. Haven't seen how the light stroke midsole wears down over a, you know a long time. Boost is always very durable. This is obviously a, a different. It's a front made from the same material, TPU, but it's a different uh, foam. Hopefully, it will last similar length of time. But to be honest, I think the durability is going to be there. The price is great value. The performance is there. If you're looking for a fast training, you know, a fast training shoe where you want to run lots of fast five and ten k's, you're kind of just starting out and running. I don't think there's anything better at its price point right now. If you're looking for a marathon, like I say, Boston maybe, but uh, and if you just got, you know, you've got limited budget, use what you want, do what you want. I think for my money, I prefer the Brooks Hyperion Tempo as a fast trainer. It's just a, a slightly more comfortable ride and slightly a bit more spring to the foam they've used. But yeah, money should be taken into account, and this is excellent value. Really good trainer. It's probably uh, the best new shoe Adidas has launched in a long time. Great to see. Alternatives to the SL20. If you're looking for something with a little bit more cushioning, but still has the kind of lightweight speediness of, of, of something like this, maybe the New Balance Rebel. Big, I'm a big fan of the Rebel. It's got a little bit more cushioning, but not a lot more. Um, and it'll, it's probably going to cost you another £30 or so. Hocker Rincon is a favourite amongst pretty much all of us. Um, but of course, it's not going to be as durable as this. This this shoe feels like it's going to uh, going to last longer. I've only done 40k in it maybe already, but it it just feels like it's it's going to be really durable. Uh, yeah, so one of those options, um, or of course the Adi Zeros, um, and they're they're going to come in a slight slightly bouncier than this. Um, but overall, it's just you're not going to find many shoes that are going to come in as cheap as this for the quality that you're getting. So some other shoes that spring to mind for me that might be comparative for this that you might want to consider. The Nike Zoomfly 3 it comes in, it's like £139, so it's a bit more expensive. It has got a carbon plate though, but I think for those faster zippier runs, that might be one you want to consider. We've mentioned the Hoka Rincon, that's, a, that's always a staple for these, these, kind of, uh, these kind of things. So the other one you might want to consider from Adidas, other than the Adi Zero Boston 8, is the Adi Zero RC 2.0. It comes in at the same way, it has the same drop, it's got a mesh upper, it actually looks a lot like this shoe. And yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's almost identical in terms of the, the, the way it kind of is designed, apart from you don't have light strike foam. So that might be another one that you wanna consider looking at if you're thinking about these. So that rounds out our review of the Adidas SL20. Thanks for listening. As ever, if you have any comments, questions, hit us up in the comments below. We'll be here to answer them. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you get updates of when we've got new videos coming up. 
Uh, thanks for listening, people. We've been the Run Testers, and we will be back soon.